All right, hello everybody. Thanks for joining me here today. Hopefully this is working. Hopefully it's uh, recording at the same time. <clears throat> Let's see if uh, everybody here can hear me here first. Double check real quick. Can you all can you all hear me? It doesn't look like it's moving down here. I just want to double check. Everybody can hear me. All right, awesome. That's awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for for joining me. Um, I, I started saying uh, yesterday on Twitter, and and it appears this will be the best way to do videos. And I'll start taping some as well, uh, like I did in the past, uh, without all the uh, fancy uh, stuff, the intro and the outro. But for now, until uh, I get to my next landing spot, which hopefully will be very soon, um, I, I, I will be able to share more with you. Hopefully, in the next week as to uh, uh, the next uh, chapter in, in my work life. And uh, I couldn't be happier. And uh, I, I got to tell you, I haven't, uh, I'm completely humbled uh, by the feedback from uh, the former subscribers that I had. Um, you know, just so you know, there's, there's over 100,000 of you out there that, that, have, that have paid to follow me uh, at my former employer. So I, I, I really appreciate uh, you continuing to follow me and, and uh, I can't wait to share what's next. It's gonna be so awesome uh, working on a lot of things behind the scenes. So um, lots lots to talk about, lots to do, but again, due to, you know, as, as many of you know, when you change jobs and you have contracts, uh, legal things come in, you can't say much. So the moment I can say uh, wh where I'm going, what I'm doing, what's next. Trust me, you all will be the first to know. Um, so again, thank you all very much from the bottom of my heart for continued support. And I can't wait to many, many, many years. Just because I'm moving on to a different place doesn't mean the roaring 2020s are stopping. Uh, we can see today, you know, a lot of stocks doing really well today. So uh, again, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah. And for people asking, I can see comments on the side. So I'm gonna try to read them as I'm talking. I am back in the States, as many of you have known. Uh, but I, I've been back for a few weeks now. Um, so all ready to go and ready to rock. Um, let me pull up here uh, a few things I want to talk about. Then I'm going to take all your questions, which I can see uh, over there as well. So just give me a minute here. I'm going to pull us up. I literally got out of the shower about six minutes ago. Um, I had, we went to a workout and I was waiting for the cleaning ladies to get gone. And of course, they're always late. They're fantastic, but they're the slowest people in the world. Uh, it's crazy. So um, a few things I want to talk about. Let's talk about Chinese stocks real quick. Chinese stocks got crushed. And I started talking about this yesterday on Twitter and it kept cutting off. Um, I, I, I think there's just a great buying opportunity. Obviously, yesterday, I think, was probably the bottom for a lot of these Chinese stocks. Um, when you think about it, the, the Chinese stocks are getting crushed because of regulation. It's good to see a little more regulation on some of these Chinese stocks longer term. Short term regulation sucks for anything. Uh, you know, hopefully we have more regulation on Bitcoin, which we'll talk about in a moment. Could hurt short term, but long term, you want a little more regulation. Not too much, but a little bit more to get all the bad actors out. So we're seeing that in China right now. And there's certain areas they're going after. They're going after uh, the Internet, obviously, tech companies, uh, education companies have been demolished, some property companies, um, some lending companies. But they're throwing out everybody. The Chinese biotech stocks, I, I, I mentioned this yesterday, and I said, buy the dip on Twitter. I said, buy the dip. I tried to buy a large amount from my own account into a Chinese biotech ETF. Uh, it doesn't trade much, and I didn't get filled. And I'm pissed because it's up big today. I haven't checked recently, but the last I checked, it was up really big. And I, I just kind of knew it. I get that gut feeling. When everybody, you know, I'm working at home right now, my home office, I have the TV on the background, and I, I hate watching the media. You all know that. But I had Bloomberg on, I flipped between CNBC and just bashing China, bashing China. It's over. Sell your Chinese stocks. I got a headline that Kathy Wood basically sold all of her, her Chinese stocks. And I love Kathy, but I just think it's, it's a bad move because. All this bad news, in my opinion, is has been priced in, or most of it. I don't know if all of it, but most of it. So the, the Chinese biotech ETF I tried to buy yesterday, and it was a large position, up 5.62% right now at the high of the day. Unfortunately, I didn't get filled, but I see a lot of other great uh, opportunities out there in some of these Chinese stocks. NIO, look at NIO, NIO. You, you, you have to try to tell me that the sell-off that we had in the last couple of days has anything to do 
with the amount of electric vehicles that will be sold in China in the next 10 years. NIO is one of the, the, the leaders over there in electric vehicles. China is the leading electric vehicle country in the world. Why, you think the government's going to stop this? And the final thing I'll say about this, actually, the second last thing I'll say about this is the Chinese government doesn't want to ruin their economy. They don't want to ruin their, their companies. Maybe, they, I don't know what is really going on. They're very authoritarian, but they don't want to ruin their companies. They have a huge ego. So let's remember that too. We have to think big picture. A lot of these times when you're throwing out everything, you're ready to give up on China. And if you're anti-China, you're anti-China. I'm not going to try to decide uh, to sway you one direction or the other. I just think there's a lot of great opportunities in these pullbacks when it comes to China. Uh, outside of some of the EV companies, uh, Li Auto, Neo, Xpeng, we have the biotechs and the healthcare. There's so many uh, healthcare uh, companies in China that are trading here now that are just such great opportunities, in my opinion. So I, again, long term, long term, I think they're great uh, opportunities. So I want to touch on that really quick. <clears throat> we got to talk about Bitcoin. Bitcoin's trading right now. I got to I got to check my thing here. Um, it looks like it's trading just below forty thousand right now, uh, thirty nine three or so, give or take. So it's crossed above forty thousand twice in the last forty eight hours. I I, I mean I, I love Bitcoin. You know you know everybody knows I love Bitcoin. And I think it still is going to hit a new all-time high by the end of the year. I think it, it, the, the odds are still very, very good for that. And I have my uh, large portion of my net worth in there. So, I mean, I have, I have money where my mouth is, um, which differentiates me for a lot of people on TV because they, they don't even own stocks half of them uh, or, or Bitcoin. They just give you, you know, all kinds of uh, advice on stuff they don't do. So I still love Bitcoin here. Uh, I, I want to say, I, I think this is funny. There's so many people out there that were bashing Bitcoin six months ago, bashing it, bashing cryptos. They're, 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 they're done. It's over. Bitcoin's going back below 10,000, all this stuff. Now they're the ones that are, oh, crypto is the greatest thing in the world. You must own Bitcoin. You must own all coins. Unbelievable. You know, the people like that are the ones that they get in our heads and we start listening to them. We think for yourself. Because you're going to make a better decision majority of the time thinking for yourself. So, I, I again, Bitcoin here, I love what we're doing here. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is, is just, and, and again, I'm not a doctor, but COVID cases, obviously, on a rise here. Um, I don't think I shared this a lot of people, but, I, but I've already had COVID. Uh, I, I've had it. Um, I was tired for a few weeks. I had a fever for like two days. Um, but, you know, for, for the most part, it was nothing like the flu. I mean, I had the flu once in my life and I went to the hospital in New York City. Uh, not even compared to that. Uh, I know a lot of people have had it a lot worse than me, obviously. Um, but, uh, but, I, but luckily I, I've had it and have the antibodies, I hope at, at this point. Um, so UK is a bit of a, a case study for me because a lot of my clients at Penn Financial and other people are reaching out, friends and family, they're asking, you know, what if we have another shutdown? What if the masks come back on? Um, you know, the CDC came out recently and said, yeah, they, even if you're vaccinated, you should wear masks inside. Uh, I think they're making federal employees wear masks inside no matter what and social distance. So who knows where it's going to go? It's going to be probably driven by local um, authorities. Uh, but what I will say uh, when it comes to COVID is I look outside that and I look at, try to look for the facts. The UK had that Delta variant kind of come way before, excuse me, everybody else. And the numbers, uh, the number of cases I looked this morning in the UK are down 50% in the last week. It looks like that Delta variant wave is already coming down. And what is very positive is the fact that the deaths and hospitalizations remain low. As the cases spike, they stayed steady. So people are vaccinated, aren't getting as bad. Younger people are getting it, like myself, not getting as bad. So the great thing is that the older people that are at risk and the more at risk people, most have been vaccinated or, or realized how to live uh, and not get it. Uh, uh, so to me, I, I think that this is something that's overblown. I don't think COVID is going to, if we have another little bit of spike, I, I said this for a while, I think it's going to be around like the flu every year. So it, just get used to it. And it, there's no way in hell they could shut down this cities again. I mean, people would be in an uproar, uh, me being one of them. Uh, because again, you can't tell people they can't work. Uh, if you don't want to get COVID, you don't want to do it, stay the heck home. But you can't tell people they can't work. So I'm not worried about that, honestly. And I think a lot of the stocks that were the reopening trade, which I like, um, let's talk about uh, airlines, for example, Jets, J-E-T-S is the airline ETF. 
down 20% from the recent high. I think great opportunities there because I, I, I've flown a lot recently. Uh, I've been in Nicaragua. I've been in Costa Rica. I've gone through Miami. I've been here in Baltimore, New York. Uh, I'm traveling a lot in the next couple of months. Um, I'll be in D.C. this weekend. Hotels are packed. Airlines are packed. People are traveling. Roads are packed. The, the, the shores packed here uh, in East Coast. So people are getting out there. Um, so somebody just posted it. Uh, Anthony posted a case fatality rate of the Delta variant in UK is only 0.1%. Yeah, exactly. You know, we have to look at numbers sometimes and not talking heads. Thank you for sharing that, Anthony. Um, <clears throat> so uh, that's where we are with, with my view on that. Last thing I want to do before I get to your questions, I just want to talk about a couple earnings reports that came out that, that I think are pretty interesting. You know, Tesla's numbers came out and um, the stock fell in the news yesterday. Right now it's unchanged. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and you look at the numbers though with Tesla, it, they were great. For the, for the quarter, uh, net income came in, uh, the gap net income above 1 billion for the first time ever, came in at 1.1 billion for the quarter. Uh, Non-GAAP uh, net income came in at 1.6 billion. A total of 201,250 cars were delivered in Q2. That's an increase of 121%. Cars produced came in at 206,000 and change. That's up 151%. They ended a quarter with over 16.2 billion in cash. And you think about this, uh, I mean, the gross margins on the auto sales and gross margins are very important when it comes to auto. They came in at 28.4%, higher than 26.1 estimate, and higher than 25.4% last year. That means they're making more money on every dollar that's spent going into building the vehicles. This is really, really good news. I think this is great for Tesla. I still think Tesla, by the end of the roaring 2020s, is a multi-trillion dollar company. I think it's a great buy and hold right here, maybe even buy a leap out a couple years. Uh, I, I think there's great, great opportunity in, in Tesla uh, consolidating down where it is right now. Apple's the other one. They came out last night. My God, I mean, these numbers, when I saw them, they were just insane. And it just, we're in this crazy market right now where, um, you know, Apple just closed at an all time high in the last couple of weeks and it's down 1.1% today. Their Q3 gap earnings came in at $1.30, beating by 29 cents. Revenue came in at $81.4 billion. They beat by nearly 8 billion, but beat by over 10%. And they increased revenue year over year by 36.4%. iPhone sales crushed estimates, 39.6 billion versus 39.56 billion. Mac beat estimates, 8.24 versus 8. iPad, 7.37, these are all billions, over versus 7.13. Wearables, home accessories, 8.8 .8 versus 7.6. That's important because that's going to be a big growth in the future. And then services, 17.5 versus 16.3 billion. They beat in every category. Yet somehow people are concerned. This is a company that is the largest publicly traded company in the world, 36.4% uh, year over year growth, and the stock is down. Mind blowing. You know, the market does not make sense from day to day, week to week, month to month, even quarter to quarter, even some years don't make sense. But over time, and I'm going to start saying this every freaking show, all right? What I have to say is, when you look to buy a stock, think, first of all, you're buying a company. It's not just a stock. It's a company. Ask yourself one thing. Do you think that company will be bigger in three to five years, if not longer? And if you look in a mirror, and I have a mirror right behind me, but I'm looking at myself here. If you look in a mirror and say, yeah, I think it's going to be quite a bit bigger. I'm not saying price per share. I'm saying the size of it. If it's a $2 billion company, you think it could be an $8 billion company in five years. That's a 4X potential. If you look at a company and say, you know, I don't, I don't think it can grow much from here. You don't want to buy it. You're looking at buying a piece of a company. It's not a ticker symbol. It's not a stock even. It's a piece of a company. So if you could ask yourself, go through your portfolio tonight and look at every stock. And if you can say to yourself, if one pops up and says, I don't think this is going to be a bigger company in three to five years, sell it. It's a very easy way to do it. I know it sounds simple, but it, we need to keep things simple, folks. We get too much uh, in, into our heads here and try to overdo things. The last company I want to talk about is Teladoc. You all know, uh, you know I recommended Teladoc a long time ago. And uh, Teladoc today is only down a half a percent, but it was down about 10% pre-market. So people are buying into it. I should have bought some. Um, 
they came out with uh, 2020 um, revenue expectation for this year between two and 2.02 billion. So call it 2 billion. That's an increase of 84% year over year. But people are pissed because last year it grew 98%. Total visits are expected to be between 13.5 and 14 million this year. That's up 30% year over year. But again, way down from 156% in 2020. So $23 billion company. The big number that really hurt people is membership growth is only up 1%. <clears throat> and the reason for that is they, they have so many big contracts already. They haven't added a lot of that. But those numbers show more people are using it, which means more revenue and then eventually more earnings. Again, I look at this company and see it's $23 billion. And I think it can be worth a lot more in three, five, 10 years from now. So I like it here. And it's just crazy to me that people are putting down 84% growth. Just keep in mind, last year was the perfect, perfect situation for Teladoc. They shut down the world. You had to go to doctor and do it. You had to do it that way. You had to do telehealth. So you can't expect that growth to continue, number one. Number two, if I looked at Teladoc, which I did, we recommended it a long time ago. We took some big profits already. If I looked at Teladoc back then and you told me you were going to make him $2 billion this year, I would have been super happy. But because we saw such crazy numbers last year, this is it's just not looked at in a in a correct perspective. So Teladoc, again, I love it down here. I think it's great. Um, all right, let's see what's going on here. <clears throat> Swat, uh, one of my buddies from high school, said he was at Universal over the weekend and the place was packed. Exactly. People are getting out. It's 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 bananas. Somebody else said Disney full capacity. Um, so yeah, I mean we we all can see this, but I'll tell you what. That doesn't get people to tune into the television. You have to, people like negative stuff for some reason. So it doesn't get people to tune in. <clears throat> All right. So let me grab my water here. Take a quick second. Look at some comments. But I'll start taking your questions now. Uh, market, uh, stocks, whatever you want to talk about. All right. Let's see what we got here. I'm going to go through a couple of people posted some stuff already. Um, <clears throat> let's go here. I can't tell your name because it's in, it looks like it's Mandarin. Uh, but two stocks uh, he asked about. One is BioXL Therapeutics. It's funny you mention I, I looked at that today. Uh, BTAI is a symbol on that. It's a stock, obviously, I've liked for a long time. It had a huge run-up uh, and, and pulled back quite a bit. About a $700 million company. You know, they use AI, artificial intelligence, uh, for drug development, uh, for um, uh, the uh, um, neuroscience and, and also immuno-oncology. So I take a look at the valuation. It's about a $700 million company, as I mentioned. And um, I, I look at the uh, potential earnings. Uh, it's, it's losing money. But by 2023, there's a good chance it could turn a profit. And for a small company like this, I, I, I find that quite impressive. You know, Anytime you have a company that is really based off uh, potential um, FDA approvals, there's a lot of risk. I mean, it only had $24 million in, uh, in revenue last year. Um, uh, last year. And this year, looking for no revenue. But by 2023, they're looking for $200 million. And again, at a company that's only $700 million market cap, I think there's a lot of upside here, potential for it. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind when it comes to <clears throat> um, biotech, small biotechs, is there's only so much money that can go into bi biotech. So if the company doesn't have anything really on the horizon coming anytime soon, you won't see a lot of money coming into it. It may pull out and go into another company that has maybe a potential FDA or Padufa meeting coming up in the near term. So keep that in mind. It doesn't mean that these companies are dead in the water. Money moves away. And when it starts coming back in, it comes in fast. So I, I still like BTAI, especially down at this price. Uh, the other stock you asked about, where, where the heck was it? Uh, ASTR, let's take a look. Astra Space. You know, this was a SPAC that announced a deal back in uh, early February, ran from the 10 bucks <clears throat> up to the low 20s, back down to 10, back up to 17. Now it's at 8.59 right now. Uh, you know, the space stocks to me, I, I, I kind of go back and forth where it's kind of tough because there, there is a future obviously when it comes to space and this is a satellite company um, and there's gonna be more satellites out there. Which company is gonna make it is a big question. Uh, the other thing is, how far out is that? <clears throat> so for me, it, it's it's a tough call. Uh, not a lot of estimates on this right here. 
I just think there's better plays. I don't like the way that it's been acting uh, here. All right, let's see who else we got up in here. Uh, uh, STEM. Somebody asked about STEM. Uh, you know, it's, the business model sounds awesome, right? Uh, you got a company that is uh, in artificial intelligence and basically energy management, renewables. So it checks a lot of boxes for me. This was a was a SPAC as well. Went from 10 to the 50s, back down to the teens, back to the, to the high 30s, back down to 25. It's hanging around 27 and a half right now. So at this level, it, it, it's interesting. It's got to hold 25 from a technical basis. That 25 level, if it breaks there, I think it could fall quite a bit for, for maybe even a few months. Um, <clears throat> it's about a $3.5 billion company. It, it had revenue about 36 million last year. Uh, by 2023, we're looking for about 560 million. So that's big time growth. Uh, looking to turn a profit in 2023 as well, first time. So I, I like it. It's it's a little bit overvalued here, uh, but I think it, as an aggressive play, I don't mind uh, stem down here. Uh, I'm just kind of going through these as quickly as possible. Uh, Matterport, uh, I love this company. Uh, this is one of my favorites. The symbol is MTTR. Uh, I think this is a, this is a great company, and this is the one that anytime you go to Redfin or Zillow and look at the 3D. Um, a uh, view of a, of a home or a condo you're looking at. You, know, you zoom in and look around. It feels like you're actually in there. Uh, it's So it's part of the future of real estate, in my opinion. It is also uh, part of the future of, of retail because it's, you're going to be able to walk through retailers. Go to their website, and, and they have some um, uh, some examples on there. I think that it's great. If you see that, you'll really like it. Uh, we'll take a look at the um, company, about $3.9 billion valuation. Uh, not a lot of estimates here for going forward. Let me see what I could find over here. <clears throat> yeah, not a lot as far as far as estimates, but this is one where I think this is you kind of park it away, let it go, put it underneath your pillow type thing. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like I like that to continue to go to go forward from here. A uh, couple people asking about let's see, KLR is one, and I'm just whatever my eye sees, I'm going to. Uh, Calera, this is a uh, 5G company. Don't like the action re recently, obviously. If it closes here, it'd be the lowest close since January. Uh, let's take a look here at a couple of things. I haven't looked at this one in a little bit. Um, it's a, I mean, it's a small company. It's about $440 million company. Uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's uh, in communications, uh, 5G play. You know, fundamentally, it, it looks... Solid. I mean, this year it's expected to bring in revenue about 261 million. Again, that sets the price of sales of less than 2.0. Um, expect to be profitable next year, a quarter share, up to 61 cents a share the year after that. So you're seeing a uh, path to profitability. You're seeing bottom line growth of almost 110% annually next three years, top line growth nearly 40%. Uh, again, this is one where I think it's been beaten up for, for reasons that, that don't make sense. And, and I, I really kind of like it down here. Maybe let it build a base first. It probably holds nine bucks and maybe it's closer to that. Uh, but it's one that, yeah, I don't mind it down here at all. <clears throat> uh, CRISPR. Uh, I love CRISPR. I, lo I love, uh, you know, the the CRISPR-Cas9, the potential of CRISPR therapy. Uh, and because I'm a CRISPR therapeutics here, KR, or sorry, CRSP. <clears throat> you know, all the CRISPR stocks ran up, the genomic stocks. When Intellia, NTLA, came out with that fantastic news, which I've talked about already in, in past podcasts, CRISPR ran up uh, to about $170 a share. It's back down around $120 right now. It's got a lot of support between $105 and $110, in my opinion. Uh, this is one where you're looking um, <clears throat> long-term. This is also the kind of company where you look at and you ask yourself, do you think it's at nine? It's bigger than $9.4 billion in a couple of years from now? The way that I look at it is if CRISPR has any of their drugs approved, and I think they will, and at least one. And and Intellia, one of the competitors, is at nine point six billion right now. So both similar, both little under ten billion. If either one has any of their drugs approved or treatments approved, I think they're fifty billion dollar companies easy, easy. So that's a five bagger from here, easy. So for me, yes, I love it. That being said, could it hit seventy? dollars a share before it hits $300 a share? Yeah, I don't know. 
But I, but on the pullback here from the high, I do like it. I do like the little bit back uh, down there right now. <clears throat> oh, thanks, Kelly. She said, my current profit on McCall Rex, 100.81%. It's not too shabby. Thank you for uh, being a follower of mine. Um, let's see here. Uh, what are stocks we got? No, oh, I'm not going to say what. <laughs> People can read that. I can't say what else uh, she wrote or he wrote. I don't know if Kelly's a male or female. A um, couple of stocks up here. Let's see. Going through. Uh, uh, the Lucid merger. The, a lot of people are asking about this. Uh, Lucid Group LCID, uh, which is uh, the uh, electric vehicle company. And a lot of people refer to it as the, the only real um, competitor when it comes to Tesla. And, you know, this, the stock has actually held up fairly well. It's been between about 20 and 30 for the last uh, two months. Low 20s, high 20s, about 25 right now. So kind of in no man's land. From a technical perspective, if it breaks above 30, this bad boy can run. If it holds low 20s as well, probably a great buy down there as well. You get the 200 day moving average at 20. You get price support at 21, 22. Like I said, we're at 25 right now. We're down a few, a few cents here today. Um, if I'm going to do the smaller EVs like this, I think the best route is to do a basket. <clears throat> Include Tesla in there too. Uh, but do a basket, uh, you know, do four or five. So if you say to yourself, hey, I want to put $5,000 into Lucid or in the EVs, put 1000 in Lucid, 1000 in a Tesla, maybe a couple others, maybe you want to go diversify into NEO, potentially over in China, um, whatever, you, whatever you decide to do. But, but I would definitely diversify a bit. I think it's a much safer way uh, to, play, uh, to play that. All right, let's see. Somebody asked if we can subscribe here. I don't have a new newsletter yet. Uh, we will have stuff coming out in the future, but nothing as of yet. Um, somebody just said Tesla's expensive. Most growth stocks are expensive, but I, I don't think it is. I, I think based on where it's going to be in the future, I don't see Tesla as expensive. And I'll tell you why. Um, because I think the, the energy business is very underrated. The subscription business, um, uh, people that once autonomous vehicles are rolled out, is very underrated in my opinion as well. Um, you know, the estimates are for about $82 billion in revenue in 2023. And granted, yeah, it's a $620 billion company. So it's still even trading on that. It's trading at quite a bit, but it's still single digit price of sales based on that for a company. Keep in mind, you know, you got to think about the growth you have here. For a company this size that's growing uh, top line revenue nearly 23% annually going forward, bottom line 30% annually. So to me, I don't, I don't see that, but you know, it's, it's that's what makes the market. You know, some people uh, think it's undervalued, something is overvalued. And that's 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 great. You gotta have different views going both ways. Um, <clears throat> uh, ACAD, ACAD. Let's take a look at that. That's another one of these uh, lagging biotechs. It's actually up today, three point eight percent. You know, had some negative news a few months ago, fell on that, and really has been going sideways for the most part since that time. Uh, it's now down to a three point four billion dollar company. You know, it had revenue last year about 441 million. Uh, it's revenue expected this year 520, uh, 830 million uh, by 2023. Uh, the company is expected to make a decent profit in 2023. Again, this is one where you come out with bad news for a biotech, especially a small mid cap biotech uh, like Acadia, which is ACAD, and they're going to punish you and they're not going to go back in until you prove yourself. So down here again, I, I don't know if it continues to go sideways for days, months, uh, quarters, but I believe that you will see some approvals. You'll see some more sales cre increasing for Acadia. So I think long-term it's a nice play. It's patience though. It's something you really have to be patient with. <clears throat> um, somebody asked about Shopify. They just had earnings. You know, Shopify, what, what, a, what a company this is. Great numbers, great earnings, but pulling back on earnings. It hit an all-time high about four days ago, uh, above sixteen hundred. We're at fifteen hundred and thirty-five dollars a share now. Um, I mean, you just look. These are the kind of stocks where you kind of have to let it go. Um, and and I'm not saying now, but when you bought it originally, you know, back back in 2015, it's a twenty-some dollar stock. I'm pretty sure I'm going to double check real quick. Um, let's see here, real quick. I don't know if I recommended this one a while ago or not. Let me see here real quick. Because I keep all of my recommendations, as you can imagine. 
no, I think we had it for clients. Anyway, I was, I was just looking for a second. So Shopify, th this is a this is a lesson here. So somebody had mentioned McCall University before. So this is this is going to go into the university section. And I'm doing things on a screen here. That's why I'm staring at this trying to figure out. So Shopify is now a $191 billion company. But what I find fascinating about this is if we go back, you know, they only went public in 2015. Keep in mind, it's not like it's been around that that long. Um, since it went public, it's up about 6,000%. So that means your $10,000 would be worth about $600,000. But what I, what I find really fascinating, and I wish I could show you this chart. Maybe next time I'll share my screen with you, is since it went public, Shopify has pulled back at least 20%, which is quote unquote bear market. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 times. So in six years, so nearly twice a year, it's pulled back at least 20%. The reason I'm bringing this up is <clears throat> it is. You have to realize when you're investing in growth companies, even just regular companies, the only way to get a five bagger, 10 bagger, and hopefully one day a hundred bagger, the only way to do that is to think long term, invest for long term. I mean, you're not going to get a 10 bagger in a year or two. We got lucky with a couple, but it's, it's not normal. <clears throat> it's going to take time. The other thing you have to remember is you're going to have to ride these ups and downs. There's going to be bad quarters. There's going to be bad years. There's going to be some departures from the executive level. There could be, think about Lululemon, when they had the pants and people were up in roar because you could see through the pants if you bent over. I mean, and that hit the stock. Uh, Peloton, because uh, uh, somebody got hurt when, when uh, they fell into Peloton. It hit it. You're going to have things that happen to great companies along the way that hit the stock. But Keep in mind, the only way to get those big winners is to ride those ups and downs. If something fundamentally changes with the company, or if you ask yourself simply, I don't think the company's going to be bigger in three years from now, you don't just ask yourself when you buy that. You can ask yourself any time. And you say no, and it's time to get out. If not, and the thesis behind why you bought that stock is still intact, you'll hold on. Because if you have a portfolio, Let's say 50 stocks, probably too many. Well, let's say you have 50 stocks and you have one of them go up 100x in a time frame and you have $1,000 in each. That 1,000 turns into 100,000. The rest could be flat and you're at 149, right? That's still 3x your money. And most likely those 49 will do better than that. I'm just saying that it's going to go flat. They can actually, those other 49 can go bankrupt. And you still double your money. So you need to have those big winners. Those make or break your portfolio. Imagine if you have a couple of those. That's how people get wealthy, folks. And that's what I'm trying to do. That's why I'm not going anywhere because I try to find these for myself. I try to find them for my followers. This is what we're going to do. The Roaring 2020s is going to give us a lot of great opportunities. And there's a lot of great opportunities right now. So I'm excited for what the hell's coming, man. I got to tell you. I really, really have to tell you. All right, um, uh, let's see. Somebody just asked about PDCO and Playa. PDCO is, uh, these are basically opening plays. Patterson companies. Uh, this is a, a dental uh, equipment company. They had earnings in June. It fell from that. It's been going sideways. I still like it. I still have yet to get to the damn dentist. I think there's a lot of people waiting to go. Thank God I brush my teeth like five times a day, but um, I, I still like this. I like all, all these dentistry plays. And, and I think they've maybe uh, have lagged because people are getting concerned again about a potential shutdown. I don't see it happening. I, I still like that. Uh, Playa, P-L-Y-A is Playa Hotels and Resorts. Uh, big presence down in, uh, in Mexico. Consolidating, going sideways after a big run up to end last year. Uh, topped out in, in middle of March, going sideways. I love it down here at 682. I think it's a nice long-term play. Uh, one just came in desktop metal, you know, I love this company, but boy, it has just been struggling as of late. I mean, it's tough to watch it. Just, it's like a slow burn down. I think 3d printing, and I've said this, uh, multiple times is one of the most, uh, underappreciated technologies that are, that is going to change the world during the roaring 2020s, uh, desktop metal. 
earn uh, revenue last year about 16.5 million. That's it. But in two years, by 2023, you're looking for three, three, 340 million, potentially profitable in two years. It's about a $2.3 billion company. So it's still not cheap, but I think there's huge upside potential. Um, there's another one out there uh, to keep an eye on. It was a, uh, was a SPAC as well. And this is uh, Mark Forged, MKFG. And uh, that's been holding up a little bit better. Uh, this one has a ton of clients ready. And, and this is, again, when I think, look at 3D printing, the best way to do it is do a basket. Um, you know, don't, don't go buy an ETF. You don't need to get that, that far. But again, if you want to put $5,000 in a DM or Mark Forge, 1000 in each, do five. Or do 1250 in the four different stocks. I'm not telling you which one to buy, but I think, I think that's a good way to play it, though, is to, uh, is to take that angle. Uh, what else we got here? <coughs> How are we doing on time? How long do people want this to be? Um, my computer's not plugged in, so it's got to end at some point here in the near future. But um, let me know uh, how long you want these to be. Hopefully, this is recording too. I can start doing these every couple of days and putting these up on a new channel until I go to my new place. Um, uh, ESPR. I'm just ran again, just picking these out of the lineup here. Uh, Experian Therapeutics, uh, Biotech. Uh, it's been hit pretty hard. I don't know much about this company, to be honest with you. Uh, it's about a $428 million company. Um, it's got some lumpy, lumpy sales. You know, last year it's sales of $227 million. This year falling to 90. Uh, next year, looking at the, back to 240. Year after that, 415. Uh, looking to be profitable in 2023. Hey, if it hits the numbers, it looks pretty good. I just don't know enough about the company to, to give you much more than that. Um, two hours. I can't talk for two hours. My, my voice will go nuts. Uh, I used to do a radio show though, three hours, a call in radio show every day, Monday through Friday, <clears throat> which was, uh, quite the, we had commercial breaks. We had people call in and let people talk a lot. Uh, let's see here. I'm just trying to go through and see a couple others. Um, NVTA, uh, which is a, um, genetic testing companies and Vitae, <clears throat> you know, a lot of these genetic testing companies did so well, uh, during the pandemic, uh, for, you know, some, some obvious reasons. Some of them have made some uh, COVID-19 tests. Uh, and Vitae is about a $5.4 billion company. Uh, they, they uh, you know, like I said, they use genetics uh, for their testing, which I think uh, genetic testing is kind of a keystone to the future of, of uh, healthcare because without that, we don't have CRISPR. Without that, we don't have a lot of the future treatments that we're going to have and uh, being able to really catch diseases much earlier, treat diseases better, which is just as important. It's just that it's a little pricey here. But again, I think the company is great long-term, just a little pricey in the near term, that's all. Uh, Fulgen, another one falls in that same category. Uh, Fulgen is one of those stocks where, you know, I think we first started talking about this, uh, I think it was maybe six bucks or something insane like that. Uh, ran up to 190 nearly. Uh, it's back then at 95 today. It's about to break out to the best close in several months. I still like Fulgen. So Fulgen was a small company that I loved for its 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 test, uh, its uh, genetic testing. But what happened was they ended up getting a, a huge contracts with uh, uh, with COVID, a COVID test. So Fulgen Genetics took off because of that. And if you take a look at their their numbers, they're, they're fascinating. It is now how much is it worth? It's a two point seven billion dollar company. But again, uh, when I first started talking about it, it was worth a couple hundred million, if that. So December uh, for this end of December 2019, 2019 numbers, 32 million. 2020 numbers in sales uh, came in at 421 million. 2021 is expected to come in at 829 million. Again, selling COVID tests. 2022 expected to drop to 340 and down 180 by 2023. And if you look at uh, earnings per share, it was losing money uh, for a couple of years. And then suddenly at the end of uh, 2020, $9.44 a share. This year looking for $12.43. But even looking way out to 2023, basically saying COVID tests are gone, a dollar a share. However, I've bought several COVID tests at CVS, and not anybody full gen. I have one sitting over there on the counter from Alum, which is a uh, Australian company. Uh, but Qdale, uh, I, I used theirs before. Um, you know, in traveling, you need to have tests with you at all times. Um, 
I, I the way that things are going, you know, I'd love to say COVID's going to be gone, but yeah, it feels like that that the COVID tests aren't going to fall off the cliff like that. If it's if it's going to be around, you're going to have people doing these tests all the time. Uh, so I, I still, and then you also have Fulgen's main business, which is outside of COVID as well. So I still like it here, and it's actually holding up very well compared to a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of its other competitors. Uh, let's see here. Uh, two, two here. One's UP and one's PW. UP is wheels up. Um, I don't like wheels up. This was a SPAC. I, I, I said I didn't like it from day one. Um, it's down to 740. Uh, it hit a new all time low today. Uh, I just don't, I don't like uh, like that business model much. So I, I'd stay away from that one personally. Um, who's the other one I said I was going to look at? I already lost it. Oh, PW. PW is Power REIT. Um, looks pretty damn good. Uh, I, again, I don't know much about this company. Let's see what it does. REIT means it's a uh, real estate investment trust. Um, let's take a look here. What they do. I find it's about, it's small, $123 million company. Uh, they own real estate related to uh, infrastructure assets, uh, including properties for a controlled environment, agriculture, uh, renewable energy and transportation. Um, yeah, actually, I've looked into this before. It's a very small company. Um, it's got some good growth potential, uh, but again, it's it's coming from a very small place. Um, the dividend is currently, what's it paying? 5.2%. Not bad. I, I think it's a very aggressive play, but it's a lot of support down here at 35 uh, it's one to keep an eye on. It's an aggressive income play. I'll put it that way. An aggressive income play. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's do a couple more because my computer, I'm not even lying, is now down to 14%. So I don't want this to shut down. And you know how these computers are. They just shut down. Uh, somebody just said Bitcoin screening past 40,000 right now. Let me see if it actually is. Or maybe you're just talking in general. If it is screening past 40,000 right now, I'll be very happy. But of course, my phone's locked up. Where are we at? Where is Bitcoin? It is at uh, screaming by 40. It's above 40,000. If we keep talking, we'll get back to $65,000 by the end of the day. But unfortunately, my computer's running out. So I'm going to take <clears throat> three more stocks. And then we're going to wrap it up for our, our inaugural show here. But I want to thank everybody so far uh, for tuning in. Uh, <clears throat> see what else we got here. Uh, let's see crypto comments. I, I talked earlier about crypto. Uh, I think you know I still love it long term. I have my own money in it. Uh, I don't see it going anywhere. Uh, I still like it. Uh, EQOS. A lot of people ask me about this. This is Diginex. Uh, it's up ten percent today, but it's down big from its high. It's at about five dollars and fifty two cents right now. Uh, this is a play on um, uh, cryptos, and it, it's a stock that that was a REIT. And it uh, took off, came back. I actually used to own it, and, and I, I sold it a while ago. Um, valuation here, you know, it's it's a small company. It's about 195 million. The, the thing is, I look at I look at potential growth on this, and, and it's huge. Uh, the thing is, you know, I, I look at um, last year, basically no revenue, uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars. Uh, this year, uh, looking at uh, revenue, uh, minuscule this year as well, a uh, couple hundred thousand dollars. 2022, 20 million. 2023, you're looking at 200. 2024, about 300 million. If it hits that, this could be a great buy down here. It's very aggressive. It's one where it's like if it holds five, it's got a ton of support at five. It could take a run back to 10. Uh, very aggressive play. If I owned it, I'd probably hold on to it right here. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, OTRK, uh, on track. Uh, this is a company that got hit in February. It's been going sideways since then. Um, let me take a look at a few things here. I still like the business model we have for OnTrack. Uh, it's in it's again AI empowered. Uh, it has virtual outpatient care for people that need um, uh, different types of intervention, health healthcare plans they work with uh, it, it, for a lot of chronic diseases, diabetes, hypertension, that kind of stuff. Which there's a lot of that out there. It's about a $491 million company. Uh, it's expected this year to have 84 million in sales, up to 200 million in two years. Should turn a profit in about two or three years. I like it down here at this price. 
one more stock again i don't want my thing to run out here uh it's the last one i came in so i'll take a look at it uh chpt this is charge point uh holdings this is a ev charging station you know it's this was a spac it's been all over the place uh, it's pulled back recently um it's up about six and a half percent today I, I, down here it actually looks decent um charge point is a uh, about a 7.3 billion dollar company so it's, it's fairly large it's expensive, uh, could be turning a profit in a couple of years, which I do like. Uh, there's a couple others out there I like a little bit better. But again, this is a situation where it comes to charging. Uh, I would look at doing a couple, building a basket. You say, I like charge point. You maybe look at charge point and a couple others. You build a basket, split whatever you're going to put into that and split it up. All right, everybody, thank you so, so much for joining. Um, <clears throat> spread the word. This is where I'll be for the foreseeable future. but. Um, I can't give timeframes or names or anything yet, but hopefully in, in, in the very near future, I'll make an announcement, uh, a very exciting announcement of, of where, um, as LeBron says, he's taking its talent, his talents when he went to South beach, I'm not going to South beach. I'll, I'll tell you that. But, uh, again, uh, I'll try to be here for, for you guys as much as possible. Um, not going anywhere. Uh, nothing's changed for me behind the scenes. I'm working as hard as ever. Um, back in the States, uh, getting back in the office soon. So uh, I just want to thank everybody for following me and support. Uh, and if people are looking to find me, tell them where they are. I'll use this uh, YouTube channel here and my Twitter for now. Um, and again, I try to answer as many questions as possible. But uh, again, just thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, for the continued support. And uh, we're not going anywhere. Uh, we're only getting bigger and better every day. And we have a lot of fun shit that was coming out. So I can't wait to share that all with you. So again, again, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It's been a crazy couple of months for me behind the scenes, as you can imagine. Um, we're sticking with it. And uh, you know, Inner Circle version 2.0, Leo, that's it, baby. We got a lot coming for you. Thank you so much. Have a great, wonderful day. Go out there, smile, spread the love, stay safe. And I will see you soon. Probably about a, maybe this weekend or later this week, I'll do uh, another show. Uh, but we'll keep them regular. And uh, I can't wait to see you all again. Thank you so much.